Hi, Bill Yannick here, Connects of MCO. Welcome to The Daily Grind, a very unique topic today on The Daily Grind. We're going to talk open AI, chat GPT, the end of FM as we know it. And we have a subject matter expert. It's going to be a fascinating topic. He's Alex Cummings. He is founder and CEO of Flowpath Facility Management Software. Alex, welcome to The Daily Grind. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Well, before we talk about the end of the world and how AI is going to take over everything, let's learn a little bit about more about you and your company, Flowpath. Yeah, absolutely. So my particular background, I was in the military and the Marines for six years, uh, heavy logistics. We were, uh, I was a tank officer and, um, well, amphibious assault vehicle officer. Yeah. Lots of preventive maintenance, lots of logistics, very used to uh, detailing everything that we need to do to keep, you know, a unit running. And so... Uh, after I transitioned out, we started Flowpath uh, back in 2019. Uh, the, we designed a, a newer system to be available to a modern facilities management organization. Uh, Flowpath, you know, a typical CMMS plus a lot more designed into it. And we take pride in innovating our way to solve upcoming solutions for the industry. And so keeping you know, our ear to the ground on things like chat GPT and AI and how we can integrate these things to make FM's life's easier it is kind of what we're excited about. Um, our customer base is focused in multi-site operations across hospitality, education, and uh, retail. So excited to be here today. Good stuff. Okay. Well, you mentioned it. It's all the rage. If you watch the business channels, well, heck, any channel, all you hear about is AI and then this chat GPT stuff took off and now it's everywhere. So let's start with the basics of what is OpenAI and then what is ChatGPT? How does that work? Yeah, so OpenAI uh, created ChatGPT. It's basically a, a, a large you know, software AI system that takes in the entire internet and spits out answers to your questions and kind of proactively uh, is able to do things. Like from its website alone, it, it tells you it's a conversational tool that interacts with you in a dialogue format and makes it possible to answer follow-on questions, admit mistakes, and kind of challenge and correct premises. Uh, what's crazy about it, it's already close to 100 million users, uh, which is faster than any other you know, product out there, even TikTok and Facebooks and Instagrams of the, of the world there. Um, so it's a, it's a really good tool. We, we use it internally at, at Flowpath. Um, some of our engineers use it to troubleshoot code, which is a kind of a normal thing, I guess, for uh, the use case of ChatGPT. But we also ask it how to interact with our softwares, like Salesforce. If we're trying to implement a new workflow and we're not quite sure how to best go about it, we just ask it and it spits out a very clear and concise uh, way to do something. We've even written blogs with it. Uh, we have one on our, our website, getflowpath.com, that was 100% written by uh, ChatGPT at, at OpenAI. There's a lot of programs out there that are using AI to kind of make their their lives easier. So um, it's a really, really interesting tool there. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, I guess, well, on the one end, there's a lot of uh, positivity and people are like you are seeing the opportunity and whatever. But on the other end, there's a lot of fear. I'm sure it's not too different than what computers and the internet or whatever. Every time there is a technology jump, it is going to hijack an industry. Everyone's going to go away. So let's Let's zero in a little bit more on FM of what could be the role of, of AI or ChatGPT to our FMs and um, yeah, how, how positive and negative, how could it impact their, uh, their lives? Yeah. When something like this comes about, there's always the, you know, the end of the world is here. It's going to take my job. Right. But it, inherently a tool like this is incomplete. It needs to be paired with an operator in order to accomplish something and set up the actions needed. And so while it can answer more questions faster, more questions and faster than a human can, you need to still have that human piece it all together currently. Um, and the beauty of facilities managers, you're probably going to go out and turn that wrench or hire a vendor to come out and do the services work at, for you. And so there's a lot of hands on uh, in this industry that robots and, and AR aren't going to be able to uh, facilitate full solutions for. So I don't think it's anything to be afraid of. I think there's more positives than the negatives coming from it. And so some examples of how we've seen our customers or use cases for even our customers or anybody in the space that's managing some form of infrastructure or operations at, at multi locations, how you can use it is definitely out in the field. It's a free tool. You know, uh, ChatGPT specifically just rolled out a, a premium, you know, priority kind of $20 a month thing, but it's still free. Um, so 
whether you're sitting at a desk or out in the field, get on your phone and ask it a question. Um, how to perform services? What is the the user manual for this particular asset that I'm staring at right now that I bought used and I don't have any information on it? Um, what's the typical PM cycle for these uh, particular things? What, um, how do I need to fix it? it? It really gives you detailed instructions for how to perform work and services. Uh, and we know that because we analyzed a lot of our customers' work requests coming in around assets and inventory management. Um, we put, we just kind of looked at them, threw them into the chat GPT uh, dialogue box, and it spit out very detailed uh step by step how to go perform uh, preventive maintenance or quick um, triage actions for how to do something. So if there's, you know, a remote, you know, general manager of a retail organization that has something broken, you know, it could give them an immediate, really detailed response or how to maybe do it, go try some triage actions on it before a technician can show up. Um, there, it also can get very detailed into schematics and, and budget work and how to set up the, the preventative maintenance plan for it. Um, or even just suggestions for how to attack problems that you may have unique to your organization. Um, the more detailed and descriptive you can get with the prompt of what you're asking it, and then the follow-up questions for it, uh, just the, the inherently better it is uh, providing responses for you. So it's it, it's really, really interesting. It is fascinating, although you get on a little bit of a technology soapbox, but I think it's, I view it much like any technological advance. If you put your head in the sand, and say, I'm not going to do this, or I'm not a technology FM or whatever it is, then it is going to be a problem for you. If you learn the technology, as you mentioned, it can be a remarkable tool to, to take away even some of the drudgery of having to look up. You talk about tech manuals and specifications and the like, really neat. Okay, so that's where we're at now. And, and for our audience out there, I would encourage you, go out, just Google ChatGPT. There's an, an app out there I tried, I think, called Genie. There's several out there. You can see it's free to try it out to see. So what is the what's the future now? We're here at this. It's just getting off the ground. It's all the rage. What's the future of OpenAI or ChatGPT? Yeah, so I mean, the first part of it is just kind of the adoption phase. It, it seems so early, but yet there's already 100 million people leveraging this across all these industries, right? And so I think facilities management and you know multi-site operators are, are inherently kind of a, a tech averse bunch sometimes. And so just getting in there and getting comfortable with asking it questions and seeing how you can use it is step one. But uh, at that point, I think you'll understand the limitations of where you need to just piece together all of these things. And so the future of it is helping the, you know, the shortage of workforce kind of overcome challenges within their organizations by leveraging AI and leveraging other softwares that can help piece it together for you. And that can help you run your organization uh, and scale it in ways that you haven't been able to before. And so, you know, I kind of alluded to some of these things that we're looking at at Flowpath, which is like, how can we help better serve customers with just auto responses for uh, service requests or automated work order answers, should you want them? But there's so many other things within help centers and chat functionalities, but uh, scheduling managing your labor and time and resources for when you're dispatching or how you're managing your cost and spend. Um, you can do energy optimization. How do I best set up my building automation systems with my IoT devices or any other monitoring systems that I have to you know, for, for my budget goals and everything else and sync it all together, right? And so I've kind of alluded to preventive maintenance programs and setting those up while you can ask them what's a good preventive maintenance program they don't, it doesn't necessarily have your list of thousands of assets, but you know, this system, should you provide it with all that list within your maintenance management system, it can then detail out line by line, an entire program for all thousand assets all at once. Uh, and great. How long would that have taken you normally, right? Years. Uh, so something as simple as that is, is great. Um, and then obviously real-time capital planning, because it is connected in real time to live data, or it will be, I think, up to a point right now, it's maybe 2021, but soon to be exposed to the rest of the internet, you've got real-time data for replacement values and, and decision-making uh, concepts around operational planning and you know repair versus replace, uh, real-time inventory knowledge, like just tools that you need at your disposal to be able to make sure your organization's being as capital efficient as possible. Um, so just a lot of, a lot of, benefits to come in the future. I think um, making sure that you have software that can ingest all this information and take it in is key. Having a kind of a single place to manage all of it for you. So you're not going to various, you know, 
channelized tools for you. So you're, you know, you have it all in one place is kind of a key operational goal, I think, for a lot of people. Um, I don't think there's any one magic bullet at this point, but definitely trying to piece it together so you can operate in one place is, is an end state for a lot of people. Great stuff. Well, fascinating topic and a lot to digest even in these few minutes, Alex. Appreciate your insight. Look forward to meeting you in person soon. A couple things before we head out. Well, one is ConnectFM does have a tech council and they're going to be talking about this topic and others as we move through and check that out at ConnectFM.com. And two big events, obviously, in April, April 3 through 5 is our national conference. So check that out. And, and an announcement, you're going to be seeing the marketing on this very soon, but October 7 through 9, in Schaumburg, outside of Chicago, we're going to be having our mid-year conference with a technology focus, and I'm sure AI will be part of that. A lot of announcements. Alex, thank you for joining us for the Daily Grind. For audience out there, check us out at connectsfm.com. Have a good one.